Hi everyone! In this homework assignment, I'm going to introduce you to an important idea called a graph. This guy is a graph. Um, there is an entire branch of mathematics called graph theory where you study these kinds of things. Um, a graph consists of a set of nodes, and nodes are things that I've represented here as dots, and then edges connect the nodes, and these little arrows are the edges in my diagram. So you can use a graph to represent all kinds of useful things. Um, in this homework assignment, we're going to be thinking about using it to represent the connections between rooms that you can travel between. So we're imagining maybe a text adventure game, and there's a character, and here is, here is the hall. And from the hall, I can travel to this node or that node. So this node I'll call the closet. This node I will call the bedroom, and so on. So you can travel from the hall to the bedroom, from the bedroom to the secret dungeon, from the secret dungeon to the inner chamber, and then it's got a secret passage back to the hall, and so on. So if we're going to create this type of structure computationally, we're going to need a couple of classes. We're going to need a node class that represents each of these nodes. And then we'll need some class to represent this entire structure as a whole. Um, we could make a graph class for that. Um, I'm just going to have a main class. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to jump into Eclipse, and I'm just going to talk out loud as I try and create the template for these kinds of things. And then we'll end up by having a tester, and then you're going to fill in some of the methods for Node to make it do the thing that we want it to do. Um, but eventually what we're going to want it to do is main is going to have two lines of code. One where we get the user input, and the user is going to tell us uh, what room they want to go into next. And then we're going to go into the next room. And we'll display what exits are available from there, and so on. So it'll be a loop where we'll say, you're in the hall. There are exits to the bedroom and closet. Where do you want to go? They'll type bedroom, and then it'll say, now you're in the bedroom. There is an exit to the secret dungeon. Um, so we'll, ha we'll actually be able to computationally represent something moving around within this structure. <coughs> if you want to follow along with me, you're welcome to, or you can just sort of watch and wait and then re-implement this yourself at the end. Um, I'm going to create a class called node, and I'm going to create another class, whoops, and I'm going to create another class called main. <clears throat> OK, so if a node is going to represent that kind of graph structure, let's think about what properties it needs. So I want to have each of my nodes have a name. Um, in our case, that's going to be the description of the room. And then if you wanted to, you can also give nodes other facts, like you could have entire lists of things that are inside the room and so on. Um, but for our purposes, I think we just want a list of what are the other rooms that it connects to. So I'm going to represent my list this way. It's going to be an array list of other node objects. And I'm going to call this neighbors. Neighbors is the usual name for all of the nodes that are directly adjacent to a particular node. So I'm going to import the array list. <coughs> now I want to make a constructor. If you guys don't know how to make con constructors using source, you might want to start doing this. Generate constructor using fields. Actually, I only want to construct it using name. So here we are. <clears throat> and then I don't want to call the super constructor. Instead, I'm going to say neighbors equals new array list node. All right, so what's going to be convenient for my node class to have? It seems like I should be able to get a node's name. It seems like I should be able to add another node as a neighbor of a particular node. Um, it seems like I should be able to maybe get a list. If, if I'm sitting in the hall and I want to know where can I go, I'm going to need to be able to get a list of the other nodes, or maybe a list of the names of the other nodes, something like that. Um, we could add the ability to remove a neighbor. Uh, yeah, those sorts of things. So, so let's start trying to do that. <clears throat> so let's add a getter for name. Get name. Um, let's add a let's add a method that will let us add a node as a neighbor. So add neighbor. So it's going to take a node as input input, and then I'm going to have you fill this part in. So add this node as a 
neighbor. <clears throat> what else? We'll need to get 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 neighbors or get neighbor names maybe is better. So this method I'm just going to get rid of the compile time error. So this method returns a string of the names of all the neighbors of this node. Um, we're going to need a way of getting the node. So get node. Although, how do I want to get it? So I can't, I can't specify as input the node that I want to get, because if we had that node, then there would be no reason to get it at all. Um, get node, maybe I should say get neighbor. Um, it seems like the easiest thing to do, or like the most user-friendly thing to do, would be to get the neighbor by name. So, for example, if I am inside the hall node, and I want to go to the bedroom, and I want to actually get that node, I should say hall dot get node bedroom, and I give it the name bedroom, and it in turn returns to me the actual node that represents the bedroom. So that's what this is going to do. You give it a name as an input, it's going to look through its entire list of neighbor objects until it finds a neighbor that has that name, and then it will return that particular node. So <clears throat> return neighbor whose name is name. Uh, returns null otherwise. That's important. So if, if somebody asks for the neighbor that's called lobster and there is no neighbor called lobster, it will return null. Name of neighboring node to return. Returns neighboring node with correct name. All right, so that'll be that'll be for you to implement. <clears throat> Is this everything that we need? Maybe. Um, it might occur to us to add some other stuff later, but for the moment, let's open up main and start constructing our main. So I want to do two things. I want to build up a graph of connected nodes. So that's sort of like building our, our world. And then I want to have a game loop where I get user input and move the player. All right, so let's build up the graph of connected nodes. So here's another important concept. Let's pretend that, let's call one of these nodes um, our root node. The root is just a particular reference to a node that we're going to start with, and we're going to think about that one as sort of the primary ones that all the other ones are attached to. So root is going to be the name of a variable that contains some particular node. So we'll create our root node, then we'll create another node and we're gonna add it as a neighbor to root. And we'll create another one and we'll add it as a neighbor to root and so on. Okay, later on when we have our game loop, we're gonna need to have a variable called current, which is a reference to the node that our player is currently in. So if our player starts at the hall, current is gonna point at hall. But then later on, we would set this node variable to point at other nodes as our player moves through. Um, so that's an important concept. Notice that the node itself does not have a field for the player. So the nodes don't actually know if the player is inside them or not. Instead, um, the main class itself just has a variable that points at whichever node the player is currently in, and we just update this variable as the one that's recording where the player is. All right, so let's build up our graph of connected nodes. So I'll say node root equals new node, and hall was the name of the main node. All right, so now if I want to add other nodes, I can say root dot add neighbor, and then I can say like new node. What's the one connected to the hall? Oh yeah, it's the closet, for example. So that creates a new node and adds it directly as a neighbor to root. Uh, I could add another neighbor. So add neighbor, new node, what's it going to be? Bedroom. Okay. Well, what if I want to add a neighbor to closet? Well, I already put closet, the only reference to closet is sitting inside a root right now. So I can't, I can't say closet because closet isn't a node variable. However, what I can do is I can say root dot get neighbor closet. And if I've written the get neighbor properly, that should return to me the node that represents the closet. And then I can say dot add neighbor. 
And so now I'm adding a neighbor to the return value of this, which is closet. So I'm adding a neighbor to the closet. So now I can say new node, and then who's a neighbor to the closet? Oh, it's back at the hall again. So what I call it, hall. So now what I've done is I've built this much of my picture. I've created the hall. I've created the bedroom. That's a neighbor of hall. I've created a closet. That's a neighbor of hall. And then I've added the hall back as a neighbor of closet so that if, if you go into the closet, you can come back out of the closet again, which is a nice feature of most closets. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to leave it to you to construct the rest of the graph as depicted there. Um, but that gives you the idea of how you can kind of construct it. There are probably nicer ways to construct it, but that will be sufficient for uh, our present purposes. So now let's make the game loop where we uh, create a new a new node reference called like current room, and current room starts out pointing to root. So uh, we start out in the hall. Now I want a string to hold the user response. And I want a scanner. If you don't remember how to create scanners, I'm showing you right now. So new scanner, system.in. So this will read input from the keyboard. And you got to import scanner. And now I'm going to do some stuff while, while what? While response equals quit. Bang. So while it is not true that response equals quit. Okay, so what do I want to do in here? I want to um, display the room and the exits. I want to ask player what they want to do. And then finally, I want to do that. So this is a basic kind of a game loop. All right, so display the room and the exits. So I can say system dot 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 print line. You are currently in the and then I'll say current room dot get name. So you are currently in the hall or whatever. And then you can go to the, and then I'll say current room dot get neighbor names. So this should return a bedroom closet. You can go to the bedroom comma closet. And so then we'll ask the player what they want to do. <coughs> System.out.prints, not print line. Um, actually, maybe maybe let's just leave. Yeah, that, that'll be all right. System.out.print line. Type the name of the room you want to go to. And not print line because I want it to be, I want them to type on the same line as this output. And then I'll say response equals scanner dot, oops. Sorry, what did I call my scanner? In, in dot next line. So that'll wait until the user types something and then it'll go to response. Okay, so now do that. So uh, whatever they typed, I wanna go to that room. So I'm going to create a temporary node variable called next room, and I'm going to ask my current room to get the neighbor that corresponds to whatever it was that they typed. Okay, now remember, uh, if they type it wrong, it's not going to give us a node. It's going to return null, so we got to check for null. So if next room equals null, then we'll type something like, you can't go to response, try again. Otherwise, if next room isn't null, then we actually have a room. And so we'll say current room gets next room. Okay, don't think about this as copying like a, a room variable inside current room. Uh, instead, think about current room as a reference to a node. Next room is a reference to a node. And so I want my current room to point at the same node that next room is pointing at, because I want my current room to actually update itself and like move to the next room. So I'm just updating what it's pointing at. So I'm going to point it at the same thing that next room is pointing at. Um, and then maybe we should actually say that that happened. So well, I guess it's going to say that it happened when it loops back up here, because it's going to say where they currently are. Okay. 
So I think that's as much as we need. Um, so now we've got like a nice tester. And so as long as you create the add neighbor properly and the, uh, the get names, get neighbor names and the get name, as long as you implement those three, you should have like a nice little simple thing that will let you run around inside an imaginary universe that you create. So your homework assignment is to have your tester finish building out a graph that looks like this, and you can make up names for rooms that branch off of the bedroom, so there's two other rooms, but they should be connected in the same way that this diagram depicts. And then you should go ahead and implement all of the empty methods inside Node. And if you want to add other things, you're welcome to do that. I think a really interesting question is, how would you randomly generate an interesting graph rather than having to build it step by step yourself? Um, and then if you would turn it into Project Wombat, that would be excellent. When you're done, you should be able to do something like this. It says you're in the hall, you can go to the closet or the bedroom. I'm gonna to go to the closet. You're in the closet, you can go back to the hall. Okay, hall. All right, you're in the hall, you can go to the closet or the bedroom. Let's go to the bedroom. You're in the bedroom, you can go to the dungeon. I want to go home. Oh, home is not a place you can go. Okay, you're in the bedroom. All right, well, I guess I'll go to the dungeon. Okay, I can go to a ladder or a cell. Well, ladder seems like it's gonna be a nicer place to go. Oh, from the ladder I go back to the hall, great. Okay, but now I'm curious. Let's go back to the bedroom and the dungeon and see, okay, I'm going into the cell. Okay, now you can go nowhere from the cell. I'm just stuck in the cell because the cell has no neighbors. Okay, <clears throat> quit. It says quit is not a place you can go, which has revealed a bug in our game loop that which you are welcome to fix. Um, but that's the kind of thing it should look like when you're done.